You know, I think that one of the most underused features of any of our ecosystems, be it Apple's ecosystem or Microsoft's or Google's or Zoho's for that matter, is that people don't use shared calendars enough. And more is the shame. I mean, our calendar is such a valuable productivity tool. I would be completely lost without my calendar. I imagine you would be lost without your calendar as well. Everything, every obligation, every appointment that I have lives on my calendar. And if it doesn't make it on my calendar, chances are it doesn't get done. And it's so much more beneficial when I can share that calendar, my obligations, family obligations with other family members so they can see what's on my calendar or work obligations with teammates so they can see what my obligations are and where we have time to book meetings or to plan projects. So shared calendars, in my mind, one of the most valuable things that you can create, but so many people do not do it. And I wonder why. Is it because they think it's difficult to do? Are they concerned about privacy and security? I don't know, but I don't think it's any of those things. I think the main reason that people don't use shared calendars is they just don't know how they work and they don't know how amazing they are. So we will do something about that today. Shared calendars on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? And today we are going to be looking, as promised, at shared calendars, such a valuable tool. Now we'll be looking at shared calendars from a Google Calendar perspective, but pretty much everything that I'm going to show you right now, you can also do in Microsoft and you can do in Apple and you can do with Zoho. You can do it in almost every ecosystem. They all have the facility for us to be able to share and publish our calendars, which is a terrific feature. Let's get started. When you go into Google Calendar, if you look down the left-hand side, you'll see all of the different calendars that you have access to. These are your personal calendars that you have. And if you look on the right-hand side, right beside the name, there'll be the three dots that will allow you to go in to manage all of the settings and the sharing menus. So when we click on the sharing settings, we get all of the details about our calendar and scrolling down just a little way brings us to what we're looking for right now, which is share this calendar with specific people. So this allows you to determine exactly who you want to share the calendar with. Now there are two different options that we have for sharing. One of them is sharing with specific people who you invite to view your calendar. And there's also a public sharing option, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. But right now let's just talk about how you're gonna share this calendar. And this is ideal if you're gonna share with family members or with coworkers. You just click on the add people button and you type in the individual's email address. So I'm gonna put type in uh, my other Gmail account so that I can show you what it's like to actually subscribe to somebody else's calendar. And once you've got their email address in, the drop down menu here allows you to choose the type of access that they have, the permissions that they have within your calendar. And you can allow them to just see your frizzy, your frizzy and busy, your free and busy time, which is great, especially for say a work environment where you don't want people to know the details of every meeting you're in, but you want them to know when you're available and when you're not available. You can also let people see all of the event details, which is the way I would set it up for family members so that they can see if I've got an address in or the name of the person that I am going to be meeting at that time where we want more specific information to be available. You can also give them even more control, allowing them to make changes to your events or even make changes and manage the sharing, which is pretty much the same as giving them ownership over your calendar. Most of us will choose see all event details because that allows them to view what's happening on your calendar, but not mess your calendar up. So once that's done, you click send and an email goes out to that individual inviting them to join your calendar. Now I actually have my iPad running right here with Gmail open. So let's just open it up quickly and you can see what it looks like. This says it's inviting me to join the calendar and all I have to do to join the calendar is click add this calendar. And this is the same on desktop, phone or tablet is it allows me to add the calendar. I click add and then down the side, you can see the new calendar is available to me right there. See in the bottom, it says dottotechdemo at gmail.com. That's the demo account that we just shared. Let's take a moment now and let's explore the other type of shared calendar and those are public calendars. Now public calendars are just like they sound. They're calendars that anybody with the URL can view, which if it's your personal calendar is obviously a bad idea. But where is it a good idea? 
There are so many great uses for public calendars. Uh, your favorite sports team will publish their calendar. Your school will publish its academic calendar. People can subscribe to it, and all of the events are automatically brought into that individual's calendar. And they're not brought into your main calendar, but they're brought into a, a calendar that you're subscribed to, so you can turn them on and off when you need to, so you can only see the relevant information when you need to see it. I think I should walk you through the process of creating it and then we can see how it's enacted. You know, another great place for uh, public calendars is if you coach a team. Uh, sharing, creating a, a calendar with all of your practices and the locations of your practices and your games. If you coach a hockey team, what rink are you at? Uh, what time are they expected to be there? That sort of stuff, terrific use of shared calendars. And they're so easy to create. What we do is we go and we create we add another calendar. We just basically create a new calendar in order to create our brand new public calendar. And we'll call this the public awesome cal. Okay, so here it is. I'm gonna create the calendar. When you click create, it takes a moment for Google to do all of the googly stuff in the background to create the calendar. But once it's done, we can then go back into our main calendar and we can see that it's available to us. We can go in and we can change the color of it so that it will look different on our on our on our display uh, and we can do the exact same thing as we just did go into the settings and sharing and choose here to make it public now when we make it available to the public we get this dire warning saying that it's going to be available to the entire world which is exactly what we want for this calendar so we are going to say okay once that's done you can do a little bit of moderation about what people can see in it but mainly you can want people to see all event details if you're sharing a public calendar and you can get the shareable link this link is the url that will allow people to view the calendar or to subscribe to the calendar which i'll show you why that's important in just a moment i'm going to copy this link so that we can see it a little bit later now if any time in the future you want to unpublish this calendar so it's not available to everybody you just simply go back in release the checkbox here and the calendar will no longer be shared but let's go back into my calendar screen here and let's just enter some information into the public calendar that we've created. So I'm gonna make sure that it's there's today. I'm gonna put in a important event tomorrow. I'm gonna save that and we've got it there. And I'm gonna put another less important event in a couple of days. There we go. So now I've got a couple of events in the calendar. What I'd like to do next is I'd like to show you how others will end up subscribing to your calendar and viewing the calendar. So I'm gonna to have to leave this account. So this is my Google account. I'm gonna go into a different Google account here, which is my main personal account. So this is my actual calendar that you see in front of you. You'll have to excuse all of the blurring for privacy. But having said that, down the left-hand side here, you see all of the different calendars that I own and the other ones that I'm subscribed to. See, at the top, these are calendars that I've created myself and that are my calendars. Down below, the other calendars, including the one that I just subscribed to, are down below here. But let's now subscribe to the public calendar that we just created. So the first thing I'll do, I'll show you, is actually I'm going to go into a brand new browser window and I'm going to, first of all, just paste that URL that will allow us to, regardless of where we are, to view the calendar just based on the web link. So there it is. So we can see, we can view it here that it, we can view the calendar. Now I can add that calendar to my own account just by going add. And then what you'll see happen is now the awesome public calendar is here in my other calendars and it's turned on. You can see there's important event and the less important event that's been added to my calendar. Now, one of the things that you need to, one of kind of the skills you have to develop is knowing which calendars to turn on and off as far as your display is concerned. Because if you've got lots of different calendars for lots of different projects, your display, your calendar can look pretty darn full because of all the calendars you're subscribed to. But you can go through and you can turn on and off any of the calendars just here by clicking on the little checkbox here, which will allow you to view or unview any of the calendars, depending on what you want to see. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to leave your own personal calendar open most of the time, but with other calendars, you can turn on your family calendar, turn on your work calendar, turn on your colleagues calendar. You've got all of those different options. Plus, remember I set up the calendars orange when I first set it up? 
that doesn't carry through, you can set your own color scheme for any of the calendars so that you can quickly, just glancing at your calendar, identify which calendar it's, it's coming from based on the color. And over time, you'll get to recognize the different calendars by the different colors. And so the more important calendars, those colors will pop for you and the less important calendars, we might just fade into the background. So that is an overview of the shared calendars and public calendars within the Google ecosystem. Other ecosystems, pretty much identical. Before we wrap things up, just a couple of things. First of all, if you want to have the step-by-step -step printed instructions on how to create a shared calendar, if you take a look in the description for this video, there'll be a link where you can download step-by-step -step each of the steps that I just walked through, through so you can have a paper copy of the steps required in order to create your own shared calendars. Additionally, if you have not yet joined us for one of our webinar Wednesdays, I'm going to encourage you to click on the link in the description for webinar Wednesday and join us. Every week here at Dottotech, we have a free tutorial webinar covering one aspect or another of productivity or content creation. They're free, they're awesome, and I invite you to join me. So check out what our latest webinar Wednesday is in the description below. And with that, I hope you found today's video to be useful and valuable. If you have a couple of favors, please hit that like button, subscribe to this channel if you have not yet subscribed to it, and please share a comment or a recommendation with us in the YouTube comments. I'm always looking forward to hearing from you. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.